Martha Baker Green will be singing the national anthem, and the cadets of the Anderson High School Junior ROTC will raise the American flag. The Boy Scouts of Troop 301 will lead the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States and raise the Armed Services flag. And after that, our Indiana DAR chaplain, Carol Weatherholt, will offer an invocation. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the I have a quote from John F. Kennedy. He said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. The scripture chosen is 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. Dearest Lord, as we gather here today for the rededication of this monument, let us take time to pause and remember what this monument represents. Let us remember the men who gave the ultimate sacrifice along with their families. Let us also remember the six men whose names are inscribed on this monument and celebrate their lives. As we express our gratitude for these special veterans, let us give thanks to God for the, their glory and for our freedom. Lord, bless the Kikawinan DAR chapter for their hard work in moving this monument to a place of peace where all can pay their respects to these six men and all veterans and a place where all can express sincere gratitude for their military service. Lord, let your light always shine through us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'm Cecilia Calvert, regent of the Kick the Weenan chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. On behalf of my chapter, I welcome you to our celebration of the centennial of Armistice Day, the rededication of a World War I monument, and a remembrance of the 70 Madison County men and women who lost their lives in the Great War. 98 years ago today, the Anderson High School class of 1920 dedicated to the school, a memorial that they had commissioned to honor the six Anderson High School members who lost their lives in World War I. The monument stood on the corner of 13th and Lincoln Street, 
reminding us of their sacrifice for nearly a century. After the school moved to a new location and the property was sold, it became evident to our Madison County historian that the monument should be relocated. Our chapter took on that task with the help of many contributors and, and sponsors in the Anderson community. Today, we rededicate this memorial in a place of honor in the veteran section of the Maplewood Cemetery, where it will be seen and revered, lest we not forget. I draw your attention to the service flag displayed next to the monument. As part of their ceremony, the 1920 class created a flag with 212 stars for all of the Anderson High School students who fought in the war. Six of those stars were gold for those they lost. We were not able to locate that original flag or even find a photo of it, so we commissioned a flag that we thought imagined might, it might have looked. At the end of our ceremony today, the Boy Scouts of Troop 301 will lower the flag and present it to the Anderson High School Junior ROTC cadets to display in their classroom in honor of the former students who fought for our freedom. We have with us today several honored guests who graciously volunteered their time to help us celebrate. Samantha Pankle, representing the city of Anderson, State Regent Charlotte Blair of Indiana DAR, Brigadier General Stuart Goodwin of the World War I Centennial Committee, and Stephen Jackson, Madison County historian. We're sorry that the mayor was called away on business today and not able to join us, but bringing greetings from Mayor Broderick and the city of Anderson is Samantha Pankle, Public Information Officer of the City of Anderson. Thank you, Samantha. Hello, everyone. My name is Samantha Pankle, and I am very sorry that the mayor couldn't be here. He sends his regrets. I want to take a minute to thank everyone, all of you, for coming today. It really is amazing how Anderson comes together and does things like this, and I'm sure that the people that were involved in making this monument a reality are really proud of the way that we're honoring it today. So thank you so much, and I also want to take a moment to thank the veterans and the people that gave their lives for all of us. Again, welcome, and I'm very happy that you're here. Charlotte Blair is the Indiana State Regent of the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution. She joins us today to speak about the role DAR has to do with historic preservation. Please welcome Mrs. Blair. Thank you. It's an honor to be with you today. And it's an honor to be here as I bring greetings from over 4,950 DAR members in the state of Indiana as we recognize and honor these World War I soldiers from the Anderson-Madison County area, graduates of Anderson High School. They all signed up to serve. They all answered their country's call as America entered World War I. The mission statement of the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution is to promote historic preservation, education, and patriotism. Our motto is God, home, and country. Honoring and recognizing and remembering these World War I soldiers and preserving and rededicating this marker touches both the motto and the mission statement of our organization. We show our patriotism by acknowledging the sacrifices of all our ancestors who joined the military service on our behalf. Today, a grateful nation thanks God for the services of all the men and women who served during this great war. We recognize their sacrifices and those of their families in a war against tyranny fought so we could live in comfortable and free times. This ceremony today is an embodiment of DAR objectives, and it is so fitting that we recognize and honor these brave young men today for their service, for their belief in serving their country, and for their love for this community. We commemorate and rededicate this marker. As we acknowledge the importance of preserving the history of this location, we do so in hope that those who pass by in years to come will continue to acknowledge and remember the importance of this place and the young men's roles in that war. 
We hope, too, that you will remember the sacrifices of all our military veterans as we honor this Veterans Day today. Beginning with the Revolutionary War and continuing through each of our conflicts that have followed, many of our youngest and finest sacrificed their lives and endured injuries of all kinds to give us freedom that we enjoy and often take for granted. Please remember our current military and their family when you consider the sacrifices made from each of our generations preceding you. And in this great country of ours, we acknowledge and support our troops. Thank you to Regent Calvert and members of the Kick the Wheat and DAR chapter, to the American Legion Post 127 for making the arrangements for this ceremony today. Your work and devotion in relocating and permanently establishing this marker for our community and to all to see is greatly appreciated. Today at this spot, we honor today all of Madison's war heroes from World War I, but the marker itself especially will remember the Anderson High School graduates, Dr. George Hockett, Dr. Daniel Davis, Mr. Russell Mercer, Dr. Fred Henderson, Private Harry Plessinger, and Private Fred Wachsettler, graduates of your high school, sons of your county, and we wish to publicly express our gratitude to them and to their families for their sacrifices. Let us never forget, let us never forget, and let us never be complacent about the cost of our freedom. Thank you. Brigadier General Stuart Goodwin is the Executive Director of the Indiana World War Museum in downtown Indianapolis. This past year, he has served as co-chair of the Indiana World War I Centennial Commission. Welcome to Brigadier General Goodwin. Well, thank you uh, for the opportunity to come and speak with you for a couple minutes. Uh, I come uh, bearing greetings from our governor, Eric Holcomb who is a Navy veteran and my boss, and I can tell you that he is very, very concerned about keeping our history what it should be and making sure that we continue to tell these stories. The first thing I want to do on this, uh, on this special day, Veterans Day, is I would like to recognize uh, those of you who have worn the cloth of our nation in defense of it. Would you please uh, raise your hands and be recognized? Thank you, brothers and sisters. I think that uh, for those of you that may not be aware, those people who just raised their hands make up one out of 10 people who live in our country today. Only one, 10% have uh, served in, in our nation defending it. I would imagine that some of you in the audience have people who are actively serving today, relatives, maybe grandchildren, or maybe aunts and uncles, or maybe sons and daughters. Those people who are actively serving today, whether guard, active, or reserve, are even more rare than we are. They make up less than one half of 1% of our entire population. So these people that have raised their hands, what has happened is, and uh, this is going to bring back some memories for some of them, they stood in front of an officer and they took an oath. And the oath talked about defending the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. It talked about obeying the orders of those appointed over them. And it talked about the fact that they would give up to and including their lives to protect people that they would never know. Because they were Americans. This is a very unselfish thing that our people do when they join the military. And I can tell you, as a former commander of two F-16 wings and about 2,000 people, I used to tell my people all the time, the great things that we're allowed to do today is because of those who went before us. And we must never forget those who paid the ultimate sacrifice and those that left their families, traveled to foreign lands so that we could live the way we live today. And one of the things that I would, 
I would absolutely ask you to get involved with is the fact that we have got to get to the point where we do not take our freedoms for granted. And there are so many in this country today who don't think about things like that. When you go to church, you know the church is going to be open. We can come here today and we can talk about whatever we want to talk about because we have freedom of speech and freedom of religion. And these people who went before us and put the cloth of our nation on their backs are the reason why we do that. This 100th anniversary of World War I is just an amazing time in our history. Not many people know much about it. Obviously, there are no World War I veterans left. They've all passed. But the truth is that this was a very, very important time in the history of our country. Because what happened was it was at the height of the Industrial Revolution. And the lethality of war became so much stronger during this time than it did before. And because of that, 67 million people died during this time frame. 10 million military, 7 million civilians. And the following year, because of the Spanish influenza, and the bad sanitary conditions across the world, another 50 million died. That's why it was called the war to end all wars. They thought, well, we need to find a better way to solve our differences. And the truth of the matter is the United States was involved in the last 19 months of the war. And one of the things that I think is most interesting about this conflict is that we actually rode horses into the war and we flew airplanes out of it. That's how much things happen. The lethality, the machine guns, the chemical weapons, all of the things that took place during this time made war that much more dangerous. And so what happened is that after the war was over in Indiana, they decided that they were going to calculate what the losses were in Indiana. And they talked about the fact that after all the records were checked, there were 135,000 Hoosiers who served and 3,300 gave their lives. And so what the, session, the uh, legislators did in a special session in 1920 was that they, they said, well, we need to honor these Hoosiers who fought in the last war that we will ever have. And they put aside two city blocks that turned into five city blocks. And they put aside $2.2 million dollars. Now, I would remind you that a gallon of milk cost a nickel at this time. So $2.2 million from where I stand is real money. They spent every penny of that money on repatriations to the veterans and to build the Indiana War Memorial at 55 East Michigan Street. That's where my office is, and that's where we want to make sure that every one of you gets a chance to come down and see us. We're open Wednesday through Sunday, 9 to 5, and it's always free. On November the 11th, 1920, 98 years ago today, at 8.30 a.m., 1920 class president Orville Hooker unveiled the memorial to more than 1,000 persons, including members of the entire student body, assembled around the site. While playing taps, the ceremonies include the lowering of the high school service flag with 212 stars representing students current and former who served. Six of the stars were gold, representing the supreme sacrifice. There are some similarities between our ceremony and the one 98 years ago today. The George Hockett Post of the American Legion was invited to take part in the 1920 ceremonies. The post bears the names of one of the six students listed on the tablet. It is altogether fitting that George Hockett Post is included in today's ceremonies. And although not listed as a participant during the original dedication ceremony, it can probably be assumed that Anderson Mayor William J. Black was present representing the city of Anderson, as is Samantha Pankel representing Mayor Thomas Broderick today. And I would not be surprised if members of the Kick the Weena chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution were present that day as well, since their inception here, they have been at the forefront when it comes to preserving our history as demonstrated by these very ceremonies. 
and perhaps standing alongside them as we are today, were representatives of the Madison County Historical Society. Now, 50 years would pass before a photograph of the monument appeared in the local newspaper. The occasion was a meeting of the committees in charge of arrangements for the 50th anniversary reunion of the Anderson High School class of 1920. Four class members flanked the, flanked the monument, two on each side. Orville Hooker, president of the class, was present, as was Basil Hosier, a longtime math teacher at AHS. Orville Hooker went on to play basketball at Butler College, where he led them to the 1924 AAU National Championship. He then was later coach at Newcastle High School and led the Newcastle Trojans to the 1932 Indiana State High School Basketball Championship. And he is a member of the Indiana High School Basketball Hall of Fame. And I would be remiss to mention Basil Hosier. Basil was a algebra teacher at Anderson High School. Tough as nails. <laughs> Tough as nails. You didn't leave your class, leave his class, lest you knew how to work the algebra problems. And I'm here to personally testify <laughs> to that. After 50 years, the original 114 member class was now smaller with only 54 members present at the reunion. And today, after 98 AHS graduations have passed into the history books, only their monument remains, a symbol of gratitude for their fellow students who gave all that we can assemble before this granite memorial in freedom. On August the 20th of this year, the monument was relocated from the former site of Anderson High School at 13th and Lincoln Streets. It was a collaborative effort involving Johnson Crane Service, Maplewood Cemetery Corporation, the City of Anderson Police Department, and of course, the Kick the Weena chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. It was a proud moment for all who witnessed the arrival of the trailer carrying the monument with a police escort complete with sirens and emergency lights flashing as it made its way into Maplewood, passing over an avenue lined with American flags. One more fitting tribute before taking its rightful place here in this field of honor. On behalf of the Maplewood Cemetery Corporation Board of Trustees, I am pleased and honored to accept this memorial. Here it shall remain for all those who tread these hallowed grounds, and may it serve as a reminder that the price of our freedom was paid for by our fellow Americans through their supreme sacrifice. And finally, I can't help but think that if the 114 members of the Anderson High School class of 1920 are observing this ceremony, they would be as pleased as I am this day, praising those who made this happen with a well-deserved job well done. Thank you. We end the program with a remembrance of the 70 men and women from Madison County who lost their lives in World War I. Announcing the names of the Gold Star honorees will be Commander Chris Myers of American Legion Post 127, which is named for Jock George Hockett, one of the servicemen honored on the monument, and Noah Bozell, who was president of the Anderson High School class of 2018. As each name is announced, a family member of the fallen will place a flower in the wreath in their honor. If none of the family member is present, one of the cadets or scouts will stand in for them. At the end of the ceremony, Jesse Kufeld and Coleman, excuse me, not Coleman Anderson, <laughs> We have we have a substitute today, Mr. Jones, will perform echo taps and the Boy Scouts will lower the service flag and present it to Anderson High School ROTC cadets for use in their classroom. We would like to thank Martha Green for singing the national anthem, the junior ROTC cadets and the Scouts of Troop 301, our trumpeters, Jesse Kufelt and Mr. Jones, and our speaker for helping us, Brian Jones, our speakers for helping us with our program today. Private Carl George Abel. Private Samuel Lockridge. Private Sam Edward Anderson. Corporal Lester 
Dow Longacre. Henry Aller. Private William W. McBride. Private Clarence J. Austin. Seaman Irwin Alonzo McCord. Private Forrest Handley Baker. Private Russell C. May. Private Benjamin Oller Oliver Bartholomew. Private Harry Mead. Red Cross Nurse Lottie May Ferry. Private Wilson Russell Mercer. Private William Z. Bramble. Corporal Lewis Monroe. Private Alexander Millville Bright. Private Oliver Edward Morlock. Private Audison H. Broke. Captain Samuel Cobb Norris. Private Walter Thomas Brown. Private Walter Victor Norton. Private Fred David Butler. Private Harry Vaughn Plessing. Private Adolf Jerry Chase. Private Maurice Ray Hansel. Private Joseph Charles Clark. Private George Edward Reese. Private Luke Leo Riley. Private Clarence J. Coggle. Corporal Henry C. Richmond. Private Glenn Isom Colifer. Private Gordon Riggs.
Private Law, Frederick Cutler. Private John Boyle Ritter. Private Harvey G. Danner. Private Samuel Russell. Private Dr. Daniel Davis. Private Joseph Virgil Shockey. Private William H. Beaver. Sergeant John W. Small. Wagoneer Wade Hampton Edinger. Private Otto Vernon Taylor. Private Floyd Wesley Gable. Private Albert Thompson. Private Louis Leo Jagan. Private Thomas A. Bassbinder. Private Sullivan Goslon. Private Frederick W. Washington. Engineer Ward L. Golf. Sergeant Whitford E. Walker. Private Carl C. Gray. Private Curly Wheel. Private Palmer Star Gustin. Seaman Second Class Earl Thomas Wheeler. Edward Claiborne Hackworth. Private Clifford Whitehead. First Lieutenant Frederick Arthur Henderson. Private Augustus Whitford. Cook Otto L. Hillegas. Captain George H. Hockett.
Elizabeth McKinley, Gopher Hoffman. Private Harrison Waldo Jackson. Private Donald L. Weiss. 